Hey guys, this is Killrob speaking and in today's video we are going to take a look at what career mode, the main mode of this game, actually is about. I'm going to give you a very brief overview, just to clear up a few questions. Um, and let's let's start out here. Well, we do have a rider name to, to give to our rider, so we are basically making our own rider and we're going to follow his career. And after giving him a fitting name, like Willy Windbrecher, uh, we are going to give him a jersey, which also will be the team jersey. And of course, you will be able to uh, pick a difficulty mode. Currently, that is not hooked into all that many things, uh, only experience gain at this point. But uh, that will, of course, change with uh, it affecting AI, as well as how much you have to play, uh, pay your own rider in order for him to... Uh, not skip out of his own team and uh, so here you are allowed to set up your own rider which is starting at level 3 that might change in future maybe depending on uh, difficulty level as well and uh, yes you can freely choose whatever attributes you like him to have for instance you can make him a little uh, speed demon uh, who can't recover uh, and doesn't have much attack but uh, yes, uh, so all options are available to you, and this this one definitely, definitely uh, Willy Windbrecher is of course a downhill expert. Um, but yes, enter a team name and go from there. Windbreaker Racing is ready to start its first season. One of the main features, of course, is that all the races are procedurally generated at the start of each season, so it will look a little different every time. There are two tiers that we are going to look at, uh, or well, we can only look at one at the moment. That is um, Pro League and Amateur League. You're starting out at the bottom of Amateur League. And this is the full race calendar with all the races that exist that could be picked by you um, at the start of the season. The ones marked in red are already full. They don't accept any further invitations and that is because you are going to pick last because you are a new team, 44th out of 44 teams that are uh, racing against each other in these two leagues. And that simply means many of them are already full and are like, nah, now we don't want you. That is going to change as you increase your rank and uh, you can pick one race per month out of the three that are available as a maximum and you choose races that are uh, appealing the most to you like uh, for instance oh yeah the road to Novo Beskov for instance yeah that's looking like a nice little tour two mountain finishes oh this one looks like Willy Windbrecher could potentially score something on yes cool stuff and uh, oh the Naubad classic yes my favorite race uh, uh, yeah so you, you uh, select the races and you can maximum pick one per month and then what you do is set up your team you can do it the other way around as well there are currently randomized riders in here there Karl Schwarz a down a fellow downhill expert what is this yes we are going to pick you up they are of course costing you per season this one is even costing more than our own rider each team can have up to six riders but only a maximum of four can race in each race so design your team carefully with what you need for the various races and you can freely switch between the riders that you have on your shortlist more on that a little later and the riders that are currently on your team now for instance if you want to have the absolute madman Niels Koch all of these are currently randomly generated um, they will probably be more curated uh, later on with some randomization baked in. Uh, but yes, so let's take the madman on board and he is straining our budget. We have a total budget a funding level here at, well, th this is not where you're supposed to start. You're supposed to start on a funding level of pathetic because your sponsor you are uh, you always have a sponsor the, it's uh, remaining the same one throughout your career but funding levels increase or decrease depending on your success now you do have a bit of a funding gap there to fill you can um, 
change the sponsor focus between national balance and international for the races and let's take a look at the calendar what that does it shifts around the focus races uh, where do we see that uh, for instance there road to Novo Beskov is a major focus of the sponsor in this one while now on the international setting it isn't well it's slightly randomized and so on but you will find a setting that will have races that you like to some extent of course else you will have to compromise and that won't always be easy once you're happy with your team uh, team choice team team member choice here you can then decide who's going to race who what race so you're going to um, just uh, pick pick the riders that make the most sense and there's a bit of a limit here as well uh, mixed races mixed league races like this one they do require you to at least have three riders sign up while the amateur ones can get away with just two riders once you have decided who's racing what you can uh, start picking what you want them to focus on and that is uh, simply done by choosing fitness peaks you have one major and one minor fitness peak to pick for each rider and you simply do that by, for instance, Niels Koch. Ah, yeah, he, you, you, you are a baroudeur and a rouleur. Well, that sounds like Novo Beskov and the sprints are something for you. So, minor fitness peak there. And maybe a major one over here in Naubat. Because a major fitness peak gives you a plus two bonus to fitness there. And a minor one as well. But also a negative. This one over here also has a negative, as you can see when I'm selecting the minor fitness peak there. This in this fitness trough, you have uh, generally lower stats, less energy per turn than what the rider has, uh, usually as a baseline, and just less energy and less recovery as well. So that really hurts. Uh, while the opposite, of course, is true for the um, actual fitness peaks. And once your preseason checklist is showing all green, you are ready to rumble and join the first races. In order to do so, we are just going to start the season and then we are on the first month, February. Ah, oh, beautiful weather. That, that is a very technical descent. Well, it certainly doesn't look like we have any chances to uh, do anything in uh, this little race. We might be able to beat Hector Morales cycling. <laughs> <laughs> it's equally shit, but uh, oh, yeah, well, well, we do have a level 7 ride after all. Niels Koch maybe is going to pull it out. But, um, so you're progressing to the next race, and what is going to do, there's a bit of you I'm missing here still, um, is to simulate all races that you're not part of, and as you can see, that is nice and quick. And you're progressing through um, very readily there, until you hit your race. For the sake of brevity, I have chosen in the debug options to turn on that player races are being simulated. So after you have uh, raced and failed horribly, because Niels Koch, your superstar, has just managed to get 26th place out of 34. Yeah, that wasn't, wasn't that great. You see the red down here, that's your riders. But at least you weren't as bad as Jürgen Zimmermann. Uh, yeah, so uh, that will only be the participation trophy for you, unfortunately. But even participation trophies are worth a little bit of um, of XP. Rider XP is being used to level up your riders, and they do so automatically. But you choose what they are going to focus on. So on your team screen here, let's go to uh, the very familiar screen from the single single races. This is where you do your level ups as well, just as you know. And Jürgen Zimmermann has actually leveled up. Beautiful, isn't it? So uh, he's going to be the best climber in the world, Jürgen. Yes. Uh, so let's give him some, some more bite there for his energy. Uh, that won't make him into a superstar though. Once you have uh, completed all your leveling up stuff, what is going to happen as well is that you need to scout for new riders. And that is very important because that is how you fill the shortlist for the next preseason. That is how you can um, switch out riders to uh, and persuade them to ride for you in the upcoming season. 
Well, uh, you can choose what kind of stat you are going to look at. That is the guaranteed stat that they will have, well, at least one of them, one specialization level, if they hit, have the level, the scouted rider has the level that you have um, where they can have that specialization. So um, if we are going to look for Gazmian technical cobble riders, because Gazmians are known for um, being great cobble riders, uh, Froinians, um, hey, and you can see some of the, uh, the the bonuses that are being applied. Usually they have a little bit more energy but less recovery. They're kind of more uh, classic riders. Hedvesians have more energy per turn but less attack per turn, so they're more grinders. Uh, Hanans have more energy per turn and less energy, so they are more time trialers. And Deluans have more attack per turn but less recovery. They are more sprinters. So, um, yeah, let's uh, search for someone in Gazmir and ooh, ooh, there's, there's someone there, Austin Howard. It looks like yeah, he's a he's kind of a cobble pro already. So what you can do now is out of all the riders that are known, which is the list down here, um, and the ones you have scouted this month, you can pick one rider to put onto your shortlist. So let's pick him because he seems to be aw Austin awesome. And we put him on the shortlist. Still a little bug there. Go back here and there he should be appearing and he will do so. He will actually appear next month. That's still a little bug. So uh, something to fix um, further down the line. But uh, that is how you're building your shortlist. You have eight scouting actions per season to fill the entire list. And that is how you build uh, the opportunities to um, select a good team for the next season. The goal of the game, of course, is we are currently looking at the current standings page. This is something that we have worked on heavily the last uh, two weeks. Um, just the back end for all this. All the prestige gain and so on is tracked throughout the season for every rider and for the teams. So you can see the current standings here. And uh, it is working that way that the highest two ranking teams in um, amateur are being moved up to Pro League and the lowest ranked teams in Pro League, the two lowest ranked teams in Pro League, are demoted to Amateur League. So your goal in the game is to get to the top of Pro League and basically win or get a jersey. Win a jersey in the uh, uh, in the Tour of Gazmir. Oh, that should be your, your, overall arching, your overarching goal. Uh, maybe it could also be just just be number one team because that will be proper hard. Along the way, of course, Willy Windbrecher or whatever rider you're making is going to uh, significantly uh, increase his prowess. And uh, starting from level three, that's not not that difficult to increase from there because you're already at the bottom. Um, well, not quite, but pretty close. So yes, a long journey is ahead and it will be an exciting one because you not only need to uh, keep a good team but also please your sponsor and um, also climb up the rankings to finally get to the top. I think this is a decent little overview of what is awaiting you and I hope you enjoyed and head over to Killer Rob Plays in order to check out how this actually plays out in a slightly less polished version um, than what we have seen here right now. There's still more bugs in uh, what I have been playing over there in an older version. But uh, it, it was the first two seasons uh, is what I've been focusing on there, playing through from the beginning all the way to the end of season two. And you will see what happens there. Anyway, um, go over there and the uh, episode, the first episode should be up shortly. All right. Hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time.